Previously on Follow the Leader. Today we're playing Memoria by A. Fell. Oh wait, that's me! <gasps> For those of you who are new to this game, here are the basics. This is a game of mapping our history as a couple, as a family, as friends, or as a partnership over the long, long time we've been together by exchanging stories. As players, we start with a larger picture, sketching a rough map of who we are together and who we are apart, where we start and where we end. Then we zoom in on certain moments, memories, or reminders, and build from there. I'm Kales, also go by Mac. I am going to be playing Meryl Whitmer. Hi, I'm August, formerly known as Dora. I'll be playing uh, Sol Hawk. My name's Mab. Uh, I'll be playing Kerrigan Kestrel, aka Carrie. And I'm Jade. And uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, given who everybody else is playing, um, <laughs> I am going to be playing uh, Max Valera. Now that we've got all that, let's get started. We now return to your game, already in progress. Okay. I would like to pitch. Because, like, I feel like what would prompt Sol to adopt Meryl would be, like, Meryl being in some kind of danger. And I was thinking about that! <laughs> like, we know that Meryl has a knack for finding stuff, so maybe, like, Meryl is trying to... Uh, get to something that her instincts tell her is somewhere that's uh, a little less than safe. Mm. And we all know she is a precocious child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we love her for it. Okay, so here's so here's a cute idea, a, a kind of cute idea. <laughs> um, so I can't imagine that Meryl. So, okay, so so here's my thought. Meryl is going to go find something for Saul. Oh, because she's already adopted Saul as her big sister. Um, and this is Saul where... just hasn't caught on yet. <laughs> and this is where Saul adopts her back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So may and that's maybe that's the token then also. Aww. That I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Is and it's something goofy that like a little kid would have thought of, but it's it's still cute. Mm -hmm. Um So I'm gonna rephrase this really quick. Okay, so oh does someone else else have an idea of what it is? Also now I have to look at the City of Gulls map and figure out where she goes. Hmm. <laughs> Of, uh, did you say what it is? Yeah, what it is. Um, I was just thinking it's uh, that that post of I've made you a friendship bracelet. What? Why? Well, you don't have to wear it. No, I'm going to wear it all the time. <laughs> 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 um, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, one of the side quests that you do, um, you help this little girl. Uh, and in return, she gives you what's termed in your inventory as jewelry because she can't say jewelry. Oh. Um, and it's like this little necklace that she made out of clay beads. And technically, it's just like a disposable inventory item, but I have not yet thrown it out. I just like, I will pick everything around it and I will never throw it out because I can't mark it as a key item. I was like, no, I will not throw away this jewelry that this baby gave me. <laughs> Excuse you. For even <laughs> Excuse you, game. <laughs> I have adopted her. She's mine now. Um. Cool. Anyway, uh, Meryl sneaks out of, uh, like, sneaks away from the Peonies' careful watch. <laughs> yes. 
to go and find something for Sol. It's Sol's birthday. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. The peony just knows when everyone's birthday is. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Of course she does. I love the thought of the peony just squinting at a child and then going, date. Yeah. <laughs> and making Marks a note it of it. on a calendar. Uh-huh. I think uh, Sol uh, is actually sneaking out as well. Like, she's not interested in, like, being the center of attention. Um, it just chafes on her really badly. And so she, like, sneaks away. Um, and I think it's just kind of coincidence that she's headed in the same direction Meryl is, but, like, when she catches sight of Meryl, she's just like, ugh, what is that? I'm trying to think of something that's, like, a vague insult, but not too insulting that, like, a ten-year-old would know. (laughs) What? What is, what is that, that troublemaker up to now what is that <laughs> rapscallion doing yes <laughs> such big words for a tiny child <laughs> this idea just... of 10 year old soul going that's rapscallion what a like... <laughs> little child i like the thought of soul having her a gr- having heard a grown-up call all that before just like yeah that sounds right <laughs> would, would would uh uh, would the peony have have uh, chided Meryl for being a repscallion? Is that where Sol would have picked it up? I don't know if she would have used it for Meryl. One of the other Her- children most definitely would have been a repscallion. Um, so that word has most definitely been said within the context of one of the children. <laughs> Someone who's very much like Meryl, though. Yeah. So... Um... I gotta go try and find the City of Dolls map, so hold the phone. I am oh, it's actually right holding here. my phone. Because <laughs> the last time the last time I went into my 2018 screenshots folder, it was to find this <laughs> thing. Oh! Oh! <laughs> what if she's a baby who wants to make Soul a flower crown? <gasps> Oh, so she's going in a plant temple. Oh my god, <laughs> adorable! Oh my god. Also, could oh, you I drop was thinking that... that reminds me. Sorry, this is I had this thought earlier, and then I completely forgot about it. Um, but I was I was thinking about how Soul's not a bounty hunter in this universe. But Yet. what if she goes into the carnivorous forest and just goes hunting? <laughs> I was just like, that's the next dangerous place, the carnivorous forest. Oh my god. <laughs> Jade, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> of course you don't know. So so that. yeah, so um Meryl's going to the plant temple to try and get some good flowers for this little flower crown. Oh my god. It's gonna be a bad flower crown, but she, she's like nine, it's fine. Yeah. And those plants are <sighs> fucking alive, I'm pretty sure. Oh I mean, God. given certain people's influences in the area around the city of Gulls, I would say so. Yeah. You're talking yep. about Whisper, right? I am absolutely talking about Whisper, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, so the plants are kind of... I don't think they're actually going to hurt her, but maybe Sol gets worried. Yeah, Sol definitely, definitely gets worried. Because, like, even, even as a... a... I almost called her a sprout. Jesus, what the fuck? <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> even, even, even as a a child, like her worldview was definitely shaped by some sort of trauma that causes her to view everything as a potential threat. Yeah. So, so Saul is definitely following and keeping a close eye on the plants, and it's just like the plants are moving and shifting, and she's getting more and more. Oh fuck! Hold uh, on a second. Hi, sorry, I yanked my headphones out of my ears. Keep going. Uh, she's getting more and more upset about it. Um, but I don't think it's occurred to her to, like, announce herself to Meryl yet. <laughs> because she's kind Perfect. of a dumbass. I do, 
I do love the idea that, though, that one of the plants gets too close to Meryl and Sol just goes over and just picks her up. Yes. And just carries her away. Yes, absolutely. Meryl's like, wait, wait, I'm not done yet. Oh my gosh. What would young Sol say? <laughs> She'd definitely swear because... <laughs> Who taught you that word? It, it's like, uh, <laughs> like hell you aren't done yet. That plant was gonna, I, I don't know, it was gonna strangle you. <laughs> we all know where Meryl got her potty mouth at age 12. <laughs> <laughs> Did I not have her say something like... She, oh no, she, she swore. She a absolutely lot. swore a and lot. She was swearing. <laughs> I just remember Davy going, <gasps> and I think Theo was trying to cover Parker's ears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Meryl just looked at all of them and was just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what you get when your older sister is Soul Hawk. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> um, Meryl's like, but, 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 but. But I haven't finished your birthday present yet. It's like this half-completed daisy chain. I don't care about my birthday. It's just another stupid day. And if you you want to have a birthday present, then don't get yourself killed. That's a that's a good birthday present. And she's kind of pouting. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how a <clears throat> how a nine year old version of Meryl would try to explain to Sol that birthdays are special, and she is also pouting. <laughs> so cute. Even though Sol is still carrying her. Sol well, is just like insisting a perturbed it's... kitten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sol is just insisting it's it's just a stupid day anyway. It 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 don't matter. Matters to me, cause it's it's an important day for you. Cause 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 this is the day you existed. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry. Meryl hasn't had the talk yet. And and you're my sister, so I like knowing that you exist, and I want you to. No, I like that. <laughs> tiny little hands and her tiny little hips. And Sol looks at her, and after a moment, she just, like, very exaggeratedly rolls her eyes, and is just like, ugh, fine. Do whatever, just don't, just don't get yourself killed, okay? Promise. And she puts the half-completed daisy chain on Sol's head. Oh. Adorable. It looks very dumb. <laughs> And Sol's probably just glowering the whole time. I got an important question to ask. Like, what is Sol's hair like as a 10-year-old? Has she started having it all, like, cut right short yet? Or is it different? It's it's not like the super close cropped that she has an adult. But, like, I suspect strongly, like... And correct me if I'm wrong, Mab, but I sus- suspect strongly, like, the peony may have tried to trim her hair neatly. And, um, <laughs> like, she just, like, found a set of scissors or a knife or something and just, like, hacked it to pieces afterwards. So it's all choppy and parts, oh, of, it, yeah. parts of it stick out everywhere. Yeah, she's like, here, we'll give you a nice, like, shoulder-length haircut. They'll keep it out of the way. And then Sol goes, nay, it must be shorter. And just takes it upon herself to finish the job. Yeah. 100%. The peony sees her later and just goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how things will be done. I understand now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Wow. That's it. Okay. I think that's, I think that's scene. Yeah. Saul doesn't say it, but yeah, that's that's when she's. I think Meryl knows anyway. In the cinematic verse, you can see it in her eyes. Yeah, yeah. She's going, oh, I will protect the small child. I think yep. that 
Okay. Argus, correct me if I'm... Ten-year-old, I will protect this small child. (laughs) Argus, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that... I think that that's the first time that we really see Meryl's puppy dog eyes actually get sold to cave. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Yeah. And it's not going to be the last. (laughs) No. (laughs) Okay. August. Um, so, because I'm just absolutely fascinated by this idea, um, because it's just such a horrible train wreck, I want to say that this scene should happen when Sol is a teenager. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, wait. Wait, actually, hang on. Did we do, um... Uh, sorry, I'm rereading over the rules. We can break as many of them as you want. I don't care. I'm here. <laughs> what was, I'm sorry, what was our frame again? New beginnings. New beginnings. Okay. Not um, so much death of the author as the author is napping. Let's go. Because <laughs> <laughs> technically, like, I don't care. <laughs> technically, we shouldn't be doing another scene until we have more tokens and echoes, but also. <sighs> okay. Uh, that's based off microscope rules of um, you the frame do and lens periods and events and then scenes within them and timeline stuff and like it's good I think like I'm not I don't want to like I think the rule is still the same but I think for us like I don't really care if we break it. Oh, yeah, I edited it's- the the dinosaur game and I still don't understand microscope too clearly so. <laughs> I, um, I don't know if our dinosaur also, game was the clearest description of how to play microscope. <laughs> let me let me put it this way: if you have a strong idea for a scene, I don't care if we bend the rules and do the scene before we've got a bunch of tokens and echoes to pick from. No, I'd like to. I'd like to play by the rules. I don't have a super clear idea for a scene. I just want to see teenaged, uh, teenage Saul at some point. So we've got plenty of time for that. <laughs> Yeah, we've got so, forty years for that. I'm kidding. Yep. <laughs> forty years for teenagers. Please, please don't yes. let Saul be a teenager for forty years. That would be really <laughs> weird for everyone involved. Yeah. How long um, have you been seventeen? <laughs> she doesn't sparkle in the sunlight, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> Does she sparkle at all? God no. <laughs> <laughs> Her sparkling personality. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie voice. <laughs> Um, so, if I wanted to establish a, uh, hmm, if I wanted to establish a token, Mm. how would I go about doing that? Uh, you tell us what it is and you write it down. Yeah, because we can can we we can just establish like a pool of tokens and echoes, right? And then they're, yeah, they're I to mean, choose from. Yeah, basically, yeah. like the first, the first frame is. See, now I'm now I'm learning things about this game that I probably should have written into the rules before I released the updated PDF to Kickstarter backers. That's what we're here for. Because it might be worth doing an initial round where you do tokens and echoes before you do the first frame. I I want a token to be I want a token to be some sort of old machine that Max has repurposed. Mhm. Ooh. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um I'm trying to think of we've been watching a whole bunch of Bon Appetit and uh how to cook that uh Anya and I have, so I keep thinking of like kitchen gadgets. <laughs> uh, do 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 any of the girls know how to cook? Carrie probably does. Yeah, I've always thought of Max as being pretty pragmatic in that regard and having life skills. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I have to check something now because I know that I had something written about uh, someone, one of my characters who could cook. Yeah, it's like, I imagine Carrie can because it is a science. Mm. And so, or she can at least bake very well. 
I feel like Saul's approach to to cooking is throw a bunch of stuff into a space or a magical crock pot and hope for the best. <laughs> Link in Breath mm-hmm. of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did I did write something about Meryl and cooking. She tends to overspice everything. Um to which I mean it's 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 correctly spiced for her tastes, but it <laughs> can have a little bit more flavor than read white people are expecting. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, August. I was thinking about kitchen gadgets and going, does anyone know how to cook? <laughs> um but i could see that i could see um on the subject of cooking uh like fishing gear like a repurposed like doing a full like fishing rod set up like a proper kind of one rather than just you know stick stuff for crabs vibe. yeah yes. or like mm. crab pot or like something like that would be fun i can see that i can see her making that yeah but yeah just just something that that Max could have given new life through her mechanical expertise. Cool. <laughs> Mab. I would like to establish an echo. And uh, it is the um, like dappled sunlight through trees. Mm. Uh, twin scars. Ooh. Like gotten it, doing the same thing or from the same place or like you know the whole thing is just like the whole slicing the palm and then palm to palm bullshit. I say bullshit like I don't find that deeply endearing uh, <laughs> every time I've ever seen it. Just like yes, they're I, friends. They're making a pact to out each and other. Just like the amount of nerves that you damage in your hand doing yep. that. I'm just like, yep. <laughs> but um, but, but twins, also yeah, yeah, like twin scars like gotten doing the same thing is a is a is a cool thing or gotten at the same time like i don't know for example because it doesn't fit with this setting like having to run out of a place and both getting like damaged by like barbed wire when you hopped the fence kind of a vibe yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. um god i can't just do rascal's egg but i really want to <laughs> <laughs> we've yeah it's been buried right yeah <sighs> Yeah. Or no, get g- given to the peony. No, we buried it. No, no, we did it. We did the ritual in the sand, and then we had the egg, and we were like, we should give oh. this to the peony. Yeah, we gave right, it to the okay. peony. So, I'm gonna put it on the table anyway. We don't have to play mm-hmm. with all of these. Mm. So, um, and I'm only gonna do that. I've got another echo you can put on the table. Sure, fuck um, it. Technically the round is over, but I don't care. Okay. Well I can I can hold I can hold on to it for later. It'll keep. Cool. Like I can remember it. Just don't forget it. No worries. Uh, Just write it down like another bullet point going, echo for later. <laughs> well, so it doesn't really work at this point because we've only had the one scene. Um but Jade, it's pivot time. All right. Let me look at what it says for pivot. Oh, I was going to just say them. Okay. Uh, pivots mark drastic changes in the world of the story. They may be environmental changes or relationship changes or something more abstract. Your choice. Here are the potential pivots, mostly because I couldn't come up with anything else. A war, hmm? a coup, an escape, a confession, a sacrifice, or a revelation. In some cases, the pivot may be a scene, in some a moment. Uh, whoever's to the left of the lens, so that's Jade, decides what this pivot looks like for the broader world, but everyone decides what this pivot means for their characters. You won't tell each other now, just write yourself a note for when you come back to it. Or we will, because we're an audio medium. Um, you cannot speak for another person about what the pivot means for their characters. If you confess your feelings to someone, but they feel it is not the right time, you cannot push them into changing their mind. That's their decision to make. And then you don't have to choose the immediate aftermath of a pivot in the next frame if you don't want to, but be certain to specify when you do so everyone can better lean into how their characters will react. We are to think about how pivots work in frames that aren't specific time periods, but that's something to think about also. Hmm. Trying to think about, as we do have a time frame on this particular frame, 
and what events are established in the world and where we maybe want to move to next? Hmm. The answer can also be no, because pivots are drastic. Yeah. Um, pivots are specifically designed to be changes that kind of rock the foundation of the world. Okay. <laughs> Theoretically, the Echo game could be a pivot here. That's that was what I was what thinking. I was thinking. Um, yeah. 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 You want to drop the Echo game in as a pivot here? Yeah, I think so. That's good. I like that. Because I feel like I'm not going to get into specific characters. This is not to, but like that's a like a real widening of awareness about what the world is for like. I know Meryl was the only one of these people present, but like obviously she's going to come back and tell people about what happened, and then yeah. And it's also interesting, I think, to consider how that might affect her relationships with these girls, since none of them were there and wit witnessed any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it could it could affect dynamics there. That would be interesting to see. All right. Oh, you know how it's going to affect her relationship with Sol, but that's good. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, okay, August. You get to be the lens. <sighs> um, hmm. So you establish the frame first. Yeah. How about uh, maybe the frame should be exploration? Hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Dig it. Because that can go in a bunch of different ways. You know, physical exploration, obviously, but also just, like, delving into how people feel and expanding on, you know, what they're thinking, what they want. Um, hmm. I've got a question. Um, because I... I kind of want to go back to the token of, uh, you know, a machine that Max repurposes. Mm -hmm. um, could we all be going on an expedition to help, help Meryl unearth a thing for Max? I'm down. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's not often we get all four girls into the room at once. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what. what? More than two people in a scene? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out when would, would be a good time frame. Because I feel like, I don't know, would 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 teenaged Carrie uh, even be interested in this? Or... Uh, I think so. Um, because I think her understanding of the city is limited as she was growing up to within like the, the heart of the city, uh, you know, type of thing. Um, and then to be able to have an excuse to go explore in wider circles around it, I think it definitely is what keeps her there and draws her to the other three. Um, so, you know, so yes, that sort of vibe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Trying to think. Looking at the, at the map where it could be fun for us to, be going. This is also still the um, this is still the quiet year map. I didn't pull the uh, echo one. I think I screenshotted the Echo one, but I have to check now. Well, I mean, at the very least, the Quiet Year map is a base, because I don't think we took anything away from uh, the Echo map. No, we didn't. I just know that there was more. Yeah. Let's see if Roll20 is behaving. Oh, it looks like Roll20 is behaving now. So I'm going to go to... Because that was the token game's... Set, right? Yeah, I think so. 
But did we clear that whole thing? Uh, no, I think I made a separate echo. Because I did the whole map. Yeah. Yeah. You sure did. Um. Hmm. I sort of want it to be potentially in the coniferous forest, just because, uh, the, uh, coniferous forest has the chance of encountering, uh, whites, and it's also, like, kind of a callback to the Echo game. Hell yeah. So... Um, does Meryl have any, like, so I guess this is a mechanical thing. Meryl can find stuff. How much of an inkling of what she's looking for does she have? Um, I think it depends. Like, I think she can find it easier to find things if she like the the more she knows about it the easier it is for her to find something mm -hmm. um so if she was like asked to find something very very specific and given a lot of information about it or if it was something of hers or of Saul's or Max's or Carrie's that she's mm -hmm. like familiar with then she'd be able to like find it easier but if she's just like if she's just looking for something, she's probably just got a hunch. Mm hmm And she's kind of going- she's playing the hot or cold game. Fun times. Yeah, they're defo just walking in circles a whole lot. Does she do dowsing at all? I don't know. Um, let me do a quick Google search. Hold on. Just pick up a stick. Oh. I don't know, maybe? I don't know. I'm gonna say because I don't- I, I'm unable to get a super clear idea of what it is, then no, because I'm not gonna say shit I don't know anything about. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um. Google is being unhelpful. <laughs> So, dowsing is, like, usually done with, uh, dowsing rods that you kind of, like, hold loosely, and, like, historically, I think it's been used for, like, trying to locate water underground, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, especially in, like, some neo-pagan traditions, it can be used to find, like, ley lines, uh, stuff like that, but it, like, depending on how the rods react, like that guides you and where you where you're walking basically i think in like um uh the, the only example coming to my mind is uh in escaflone she has a necklace that she uses like a pendulum and if you hold it over a map uh and it will like swing in a direction that you have to go yeah uh no okay i think it's mostly internal it does mean that they're going like back and they're they're like zigzagging a little bit. <laughs> Which is probably uh, annoying, but Important question, given the pivot that we established, as this was the clearing where uh Rascal was found is in the Coniferous Forest too. Yeah. Just does that play in or just like do we end up talking about that? Or is that like, do you keep getting taken back to that clearing? Just like, no, then. I've already done this. I think mm -hmm. it, oh, it, I mean, it definitely comes up. Because I, I, I definitely this side think quest. that that happens. <laughs> Where Meryl's like, no. Like, they come across a clearing for the third time and she's like, fucking Jesus. Or fantasy mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> Tall boy, damn it. I don't know. <laughs> Um, yeah, and she kind of, like, stops and, like, bolts her arms. She's like, I'm... There's nothing... There's nothing here. Not anymore. What time of year is this, quickly? I know the forest will be green regardless, because that'd be how coniferous trees work. But <laughs> is it summer? Is it... Well, wait, what's the vibe? What do you think, I kind of like... 
I kind of like it being a uh, uh, summer in contrast to uh, hmm. the Echo game. Same. Big same. Like, giant insects buzzing. Ugh. It's great. <laughs> so. Hey, what's up? Uh, Max will come up next to you and sort of like chuck at the back, you know, like shoulder check you a little bit. Yeah. But not in the mean way, just like coming up behind you like, hey. This is teenage years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, vibes are all wrong. I think uh... it's still uh... and she like kind of taps her because <laughs> it's still picking up uh, the the tall boy. Oh. And this is the third time. <laughs> yeah, Sol kind of like puffs up and is just like, I think you mean Rascool the Mighty or whatever. Rascool the Mighty! <laughs> <sighs> yeah. She mm. kicks a giant pine cone. <laughs> I think Carrie's just kind of like pacing the edge of the clearing and just looking, like watching the tops of the trees as she walks around. Have you tried digging? Maybe you'll find something underneath. I mean, that's the... That's the only thing I can think of, but... I'm sure what... I'm sure it's not here. What are we even looking for? Well, then how do you know it's not here if you don't know what we're looking for? No, I'm. that was an out-of-character uh. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't... God, the only thing I can think of is a fucking, like, rusted old pasta maker, and I just... It's... <clears throat> we've been watching too much Bon Appetit. Like, Claire Saffitz has poisoned my brain somehow. Um... But I think it I think it should be something a little more complex than that, but something that can be uh it's a MacGuffin maker. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just like a kind of like not sci fi ish, but like kind of retro futuristic gidget that's maybe about the size of you know, my like maybe a cubic foot in volume, so that way it's kind of big-ish, but we could still haul it back relatively easily. Um, I'm laughing because I was thinking that Meryl's next statement was going to be, listen, if what we're looking for is one of raw schools, then uh, ain't no way we're carrying it back. <laughs> it's staying here. <laughs> but it's not. It's <sighs> It feels smaller than that. She kind of, like, wanders the clearing a little bit, and she's like, nah, whatever it is, it's not here. Do you need a little moment to recalibrate? Yeah. Oh, God, she bamfs away, doesn't she? <laughs> Amazing. Curious, like, oh, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Fucking hate when she does that. Max doesn't say anything. But just is looking where Meryl just was and does not say anything about hating it. <laughs> <laughs> just does that sort of fond, I guess, looking smirk. Carrie just keeps pacing and will occasionally just like bend down, pick up a stone, study it, toss it aside. My guess is we're probably going deeper. Well, if we can get out of the sun, I am pro it happening. Ugh. I hate being this far away from the water on days like today. Oh, we should just go swimming after this. Oh, good idea. Uh, Meryl bamps back and she goes, okay, I think I know. All right. And now she's going to actually walk. <laughs> completely unimportant question but because I had a huge crush on Nightcrawler when I was younger um, 
when uh when he bamps um like there's the the smell of sulfur uh in his wake is that the same with Meryl? No, nah, I think it's better. Okay. I think it's a slightly better smell than sulfur. If it was soul, I think it would still be sulfur. Yeah. Mm. But I think that Meryl smells eh, I'll think about it. I mean, she doesn't have to, it doesn't have to leave a smell at all. Yeah, because the whole thing with why it smells like sulfur when Nightcrawler is because he's passing through a dimension. Yeah, he's, he's passing through like a hell dimension. Yeah. If anywhere Meryl's going through the Feywild. I was going to say, yeah, it would probably be like, I like the idea of the, it to be like, smell like, like crushed flowers under heel. Yeah. Mm, I like that. Or like, uh, like, yeah, or uh, even like the summery grassy smell. Um, I've played an Eladrin, and depending on mm, what season mm-hmm. she was in, uh, her ability to do like the short range teleportation smelled different. Mm. So that's nice. And she brought a little bit of weather. Like if she was in spring when she arrived in a place, there was like flower petals that came with. And if <laughs> oh it was winter, a few flakes of snow came with her. Yeah. So I a Fay in a story, or a she in the story I was writing, and. She just smelled like loam everywhere she went. Mm. So. Yeah, and I mean, I guess thinking about how Fantasy Meryl is half elf mm-hmm. or half fey, depending. I'm not 100% sure on either. Um, I think that works pretty well for her. Yeah. Also, works nice. in pretty nice contrast with Sol being a pyrokinetic. So, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's all kind of, like, gestures forward. Alright, lead on. And they do eventually find the thing. Yeah. (laughs) Alrighty. I am just imagining Saul, like, hefting it up onto one shoulder. Sun's out, gun's out. That kind of thing. Yeah, flexing those muscles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I was imagining, like, tank top and shorts kind of a vibe but like fantasy tank top and shorts <laughs> yeah of like, course yeah everything cut down kind of a vibe i think those exist well yeah. yeah like undergarment kind of style like short leggings or whatever just like cut down for cooler weather made of a lighter fabric yeah yeah I'm kind of thinking, like, I started playing Dragon's Dogma, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna make Soul as uh, my main character in Dragon's Dogma, and uh, the starting outfit that uh, the game put her in is, like, a kind of, like, white short sleeve shirt that, like, kind of loosely laced up the front, and, like, plain breeches, and I'm kind of imagining that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's good. I was just, I finally watched The Mandalorian and it was just me going like, ugh, Gina Carano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the entire yeah. time. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> Those muscles. <laughs> mm. I was like, oh, this is how Carrie feels. Um, it's good, is the thing. Sure is. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, are we doing? Are we doing token echo time? Um, we've we've got tokens and echoes at this point that you could do uh scenes if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, because that is in fact how the game works. You can either do a token or echo, or you can do a scene or moment. Um, but in order to do scene or scenes and moments, you have to have tokens and echoes on the board. You have to spend a, a token or an echo. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, I get it. <laughs> well, I think now that we've talked about it, I do want to add in the echo of flowers crushed underfoot. Mm. Mm. Love it. Good shit. Jade. Yeah, I have a possible idea for a scene, and I can see uh, a token that might fit into it. Uh, so uh, I will pitch this uh to you august because i find it really hard to think about uh max and soul without facial piercings 
Um, oh, I just, my God. Solid, my brain has an eyebrow piercing at the very least, and I struggle to imagine her without one. I could be way off base. I, I feel like she... I feel like she definitely has one while younger, but mm-hmm. I think that she eventually takes it out because she mm-hmm. realizes it's a liability if it's if she's in a fist fight. Sure, but <laughs> how would you like to explore getting pierced? As in, you know how like in bad scenes, like teenage girls pierce each other's ears. It's yes. like the stepped up version of that. With <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> uh. Fuck. Also, we didn't really establish the relationship vibe between Sol and Max in this universe. Well, we got the time right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, so if we're sort of in this, and this is sort of like personal exploration of the self and like self-expression. So I feel mm-hmm. that vibes with where we're at. Um. <laughs> All right. This is, uh, I don't know, I assume it's still at possibly at the at the group home at this point. So we'll just like knock uh, because it's because of Max and at this point in her life, what she's able to do and the sort of person that she is. It's maybe like evening sort of time. And there's just like a knock at your window or like the window frame area, mm-hmm. uh, and Max is just like perched out there. I don't know the layout of the building or whatever, but either way, regardless of what story this window is on, Max is perched outside it. I love it. Oh, man. God, I can't help but think of of Saul just being kind of exasperated a little bit at everybody else's shenanigans. Like, excuse you, I don't do shenanigans. She, el- <laughs> she has old lady energy. We've established this. We, yeah, we know. know. <laughs> we know this about you, Sol. <laughs> and we love you. <laughs> yeah, so Sol goes to the window and is just like, what, what do you want, Valera? I have a possible favor to ask of you, because you are the only person... I could think of that would be willing to do this. <laughs> Soul arches an eyebrow, but she says, go on. So, I would like you to help me pierce my eyebrow. Because you are the only person I could think of that would willingly shove something sharp through part of my face. <laughs> I don't hate you that much, but... No, but it's more like you're not squeamish. <laughs> oh, so, I love that. Also, so you probably much. wouldn't try to talk me out of it. Meryl in the other room. I take offense to that. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> the try to talk her out of it or the being squeamish? The try to talk her out of it. Yeah, I think Meryl, she would assume, was a bit too squeamish to do it. Yes. Because Mel- Meryl doesn't like hurting people, and Carrie would probably try to talk her out of it. Yeah. <laughs> or just be judgy about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think more than too squeamish, Meryl would be too nervous of hurting yeah. Max, and then actually hurt her. Yeah, exactly. It's that kind of vibe. Like, Max wouldn't ask Meryl to do that, because she knows it would make Meryl uncomfortable for a couple of possibly different reasons. Whereas she thinks Sol wouldn't have an issue with it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think I think she's definitely right on Sol's part, because uh, Sol just kind of, like, uh, steps back and, like, gestures for Max to, to enter. Uh, Max will hop in. I'm just like, you're a peach, Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't sweet enough to be... A peach. I don't know, I've had some pretty sour peaches in my time. Soul snorts. <laughs> and uh, Max is going to like unsling a bag and pull it off and uh, just pull out a small kit and there's like a couple of earrings, uh, a needle and a small bottle of like moonshine for disinfecting purposes because Max is a bit, you know, a cavalier but isn't necessarily totally stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't want to go into too much detail no, just no, no, because no. like 
Saul is not a qualified piercer, so I definitely don't think it's uh, a pretty process. But I mean, I do think sure. that like she she does her best to sanitize the needle, uh, like maybe passing it through her own flame before dousing it in the moonshine. Um, dope. That's an in character dope. <laughs> 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 Fucking metal. <laughs> Saul snorts again and is just like, hold still. Um, How old are they? Uh, this, I imagine this is not, maybe it's like the same sort of yearish as that expedition into the woods. Um, so this is like 17, 18. Yeah. Good. Vibe. That's what I was thinking. Uh, I know this, it's the wrong vibe for Max and Sol, but you know that fucking picture of the girl lying face back on the bed with the other girl <laughs> kneeling over her doing her makeup? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just picturing <laughs> that kind of vibe because that's probably actually the easiest way to do yeah. it if you don't have like a chair or whatever. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, I, I don't think it's pretty. I think it definitely hurts. But oh, I yeah. also do think that Sol's hands are steady. Um, mm hmm and uh um afterwards uh soul kind of like steps back and is just like fuck well what? Did you, you want to get revenge face? on me are you saying you want me to do you i mean i stabbed you but good if you want to stab me but good i'm not gonna stop you you know, you could just say you want your eyebrow pierced, Sol. <laughs> you can say that now you think it looks really cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and Max will uh, repay the favor, hands sort of equally steady. Um, and whatever moonshine is left uh, afterwards uh, will offer it. Uh, to Sol first to have a drink. There's probably like a shot or two's worth each in there. It's not like a massive bottle or anything. Yeah, probably a swig apiece. Yeah. Because uh, Sol definitely wouldn't take the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, just like, they're sat there afterwards. They're just like, Bad at. Looks pretty good on you. You ain't so bad yourself. <laughs> My beating heart, be still. Uh, but like, it just does sort of a playful shoulder nudge mm -hmm. as well. They cannot have the same eyebrow pierced. Because <laughs> that is just a little too on the nose. But I like the, both of them having it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm now going to look at my pick crew to see, <laughs> because now I'm trying to remember what side. Oh, <laughs> Max has pissed. I have so many pick crews, you guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I would uh, suggest that that is the um, token twin scars. Yeah, Ooh. I was I was going to suggest that too, because like it definitely it there's you know how like if a piercing doesn't go quite right there's a little scar tissue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely god i forgot about our cast page mm -hmm. <laughs> it delights um, me for max uh, as per the pick crew it's uh, her right eyebrow so uh, yeah which means it would be sol's left eyebrow so yes sweet Oh, hell yeah, I made it match on both versions of Max. Sweet. Nice. Go past Jade. <laughs> you did good. Um, I'm going to put a little strike through um, on this token just so we know it's been used. You should uh, do it for both. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, I want to do another token. I don't know what it is yet. An old piece of jewelry from pre-cataclysm. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, August, take us out. Um, so, uh, 
So that means I do a pivot. No, we'll, um, you do another... Oh. Token oh, or scene no. or both uh, to close us out. Um, I think I want to do another token um, that's like uh, a rusty knife. Mm -hmm. uh, is the knife for ritual purposes? Is it for just like cutting herbs or is it for stabbing people who knows who but knows play to find out what Ritually happens stabbing people yeah <laughs> so a rusty knife okay now i have to do a pivot and i'm going to say no not today <laughs> unless i say <laughs> um this is when sable and marius show up <gasps> yes mm. yes good shit we are accidentally moving linearly and i can't bring myself to care yeah we can, <laughs> we can always do a different thing in a bit we'll hop yeah. back yeah. we're gonna hop back and forth yeah mm -hmm. but i think also, that don't... that works mm -hmm. vaguely timeline wise because meryl was 12 during the echo game and we said somewhere between five and ten years yeah, mm -hmm. is when Sable and Marius arrive. So it's probably it, it's it's we're going to be vague again and say it's around that time frame. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> getting yelled at in DMs. I'm rightly so. <laughs> Look, I didn't pick smelling like flowers or fire. <laughs> August started out it out of context. Follow the leader. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even it wasn't even it, it wasn't even intentional nope that how it be That's that how just it be. how it be in the city of goals god damn it all right let's move on with our lives map yeah uh, so map is the new lens right hmm? yes uh i've been i've been trying to think about what i want to do um i think the the frame that I want to use is um, I want to call it uh, like small lessons and so Ooh. it's not uh, you know it's just kind of like learning little things uh, either like about each other or about the world but they're like small or soft lessons and they're not things that you learn in school it's through the experience and so now I got it got a little slide um so if i'm setting up an initial scene do i use one of the tokens or echoes existing or is this uh is that only when you're going through the rest of the round um you can if you want to um but you also have the option to create something new and then build off of that okay all right but you can cool. absolutely use one that already exists if you have no an yeah because i not really, because the only thing that I can think of to use for one of the existing tokens would have been Rascal's egg, but then that would have been a harder lesson. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mostly because um, when I when I think of the Rascal's egg and then the pivot of the token game within context of Carrie, it's she was still too young to to be able to recognize how that has shifted the energy within the city. Um, and so, like, that is something, and, you know, then with Marius, she's able to learn and understand it. Um, so, but that's more of an educational, like, in-school sort of vibe lesson than what I want to go for. Um, so, yeah, it, it's mostly going to be, I want to be able to create something new. Yeah. That's the power that you have as the lens, is you can kind of do whatever the fuck you want. Fabulous. So I guess this is scene four. Um. Oh, I have to. I have to. Mm, time frame. Mostly, I would love for a scene with either Meryl or Max. Um. Just also, but I'm not too sure what yet. Let me think on this. Unless anyone has any ideas. I personally want to see more of Max and Carrie. 
Mm -hmm. always. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we've gotten enough of their dynamic. I think we've, yeah. Except for maybe the high school fiasco game, but that was so long ago. I barely remember their dynamic from that game. Mm, uh, I don't remember it either. It was (laughs) more combative. We didn't have many scenes together. Yeah. There were five Um, of us. I don't know how we did mm -hmm. that. Uh, so yeah, then, then I would love a scene with Max, Mm -hmm. um, and I would say probably, like, I I would say it's probably back a little bit before, so, like, it would be, like, mid-teens instead of, like, the later teens, Mm -hmm. um, but, hmm. I'm only putting our ages there, um, to give myself something to... Uh, go right. With. Yeah, I like I like having that reference. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I just Thank like you. having the reference there. Yeah, uh, especially if we're trying to figure it out within our own like mental timeline, mm-hmm. uh, of around other scenes of when they have happened. Um, but I mean, probably. Like, it's, it's, I, you had mentioned at one point, Jade, earlier when we were looking for different machine things, but the idea of, like, a fishing, like, a whole, like, fishing tackle mm. set for Max, and mm. then I like the idea of Max going fishing, because mm-hmm. uh, that is such, like, a stationary activity. Yeah. Um, but I also, uh, like, I think Carrie going with her and... um. I like the idea of just like Carrie sitting and making small little charms as they're like sitting together, but mm-hmm. just also like it's a you know they're they're mid teens. It's like a weird point in their friendship, I think, but because um, they are being both like still and quiet together. Mm. Um, but that's that's what I would like to to see, and then we can figure out what that token or echo is after sure oh i like the thought um this is jade's very rudimentary knowledge of how fishing works (laughs) but of kerry like doing a little light thing on the hook like a lure like something Mm -hmm. shiny and sparkly on the bottom of it so when it's under the water it likes more likely to catch a fish's attention Yes, definitely. Very anglerfish vibes, but it's just kind of like, ooh, look at the shiny. Look at the shiny. I think that's a common with fly fishing is like brightly colored lures. You don't have to necessarily do it in um, fly fishing also. Fair. I I know nothing in the way of fishing. I've been fishing a couple of times. Cool. I've gone once. Um, What time of year? Is this another summery scene or is this... Um, I mean, I love the summer scenes just, like, sitting on, like, uh, a rock that's over, that juts out into the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, Me too. you know, prob- you know, it's just a good vibe. I like this. It, it's also just almost summertime in general, so mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just feeling it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think, like, you know, just another really hot summer day and mm-hmm. Carrie's there just practicing different little charms on the lures or you know using the fishing wire to make elaborate sort of um uh like woven woven mm-hmm. spell things more more so mm-hmm. and just like trying it and then undoing it and trying it again some other way you better not break my fishing wire doing that i say no, not, not turning around <laughs> get you more if it breaks but the import the entire point of fishing wire is that it doesn't break doing things like this yeah well i don't know if it's built for taking magic i'm glad you seem to be so confident that my magic could break things i just look back over my shoulder at you (laughs) fairly certain that's not what i said you're getting sunburned by the way Oh, well, I'll do something about it later. Though I do also like the idea of her wearing a really broad brimmed, like a wide brimmed hat. Oh, let me be clear. I don't think she necessarily is getting sunburned. I think Max <laughs> is just saying. 
<laughs> because <laughs> Terry's like this really pale blonde, whereas yes. Max has obviously got like the darker skin, dark hair. Who pro- like I'm imagining she has like a pair of something like sunglasses on, like yeah. retrofitted, like old school, and like a bit of fabric like slung over her head and shoulders. Mm-hmm. So and she's just like, try this one. Hands out another little. She'll make like make little knots out of the fishing wire, and then they like bobble with like little balls of light. And she's like, here, try this one. See if this one works. All right. Pulls on the line, attaches it, casts it back out again. And the the there's just like an odd little bit of spray. The water's probably pretty calm. Oh, it's how I'm pitch- Oh, it's tidal, so it's not like still, mm-hmm. but calm sort of day. And sun's glittering off the water up at us. And just. I feel like it's a companionable quiet when they aren't talking. Yeah. So again, it's their weird friendship. <laughs> yeah. We said we've gone back a little bit right before the pivot. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, no conversations about our strange new interlopers. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna, but uh, just make the thing of that. Uh, just like as the little like bobs around, just like. You ever think of what you might be able to do with what you can do? Uh, I take one hand off my rod and do a kind of <laughs> gesture with it. <laughs> uh, I'm constantly doing what I think I can do with what I can do. Don't. You're mm-hmm. smarter than that. You know what I meant. How broad a scale are you speaking of? I know, how long you plan to live for, Kestro? Ooh, is that an option? What well, option? Get... <laughs> I mean, the peony's been around, like, forever. It's that weird shit with... Rascal. Yeah. Like, who knows how many times you get to go around. If that's an option I'm given, I... Hmm. I don't know. I think... For me, a part of the the fun is knowing that there is a timeline. Sure. So just like cramming it all in as much as I can. Which loops back to, do you think you'll, or what do you think you want to do with what you can do in the time that you have to do stuff with it? Is everything too vague of an answer? <laughs> You are, without a doubt, one of the most frustrating people to talk to. <laughs> Explain to me why I, just... I invited you out today. Mm, did you invite me? I thought I followed. Ugh, that sounds about <laughs> right. Because I wanted to try out something new. Um, you know, that whole doing what I what I want to be doing with what I can do. Ah, I see. And so, table turns. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know yet if there are limits, so she just, like, shrugs, undoes the the knot that she was doing. Hmm. Just sort of What about you? Is there a direction? (sighs) I mean, maybe I leave the city for a bit, try find something from the cataclysm, see what I can like the stuff here that I can find that I can do stuff with is interesting enough but what if I could make something bigger or do something with something bigger it's it's no I, I understand it's extremely limited here yeah like it's like not knowing how far you can run if all you've got is like a short stretch from to the bottom of the street. There's just there's got to be more out there for us to get like the little drips that there are left. I don't know. I like the thought of finding it.
Hi, it's August, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on your podcast platform of choice, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about us using the FTLcast hashtag. We are also part of a nonprofit podcasting guild called Standing Stones Productions. We do a variety of shows, including The Room Where It Happened and Dumb Kids Playing Hero, two actual play shows, and a Steven Universe discussion podcast called Gay Space Rocks. We also do live streams at twitch.tv slash standingstonesprod. You can keep up with everything that we do on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Unfortunately, Standing Stones was already taken. Your support means a lot. Thanks again!